Vogelzang, and we are talking about what's happening at Vogelzang Law. This past week was, actually two weeks before, was the National Asbestos Awareness Week, and that's when the ADAO, the Asbestos Disease, uh, sorry, I don't remember quite what it is, it's, I'm not sure, but anyway, the ADAO, which is the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization, there I got it, they have a uh, march on Capitol Hill, and Morella and Allison from our outreach team here at the firm went to Capitol Hill, marched, had a great banner with a lot of our older clients that have passed away from asbestos disease, and raised awareness, which was what the whole thing was about. And it was a, a great day out there, and they also had a conference, the ADAO did, about how to prevent asbestos disease, how to prevent the use of asbestos, still lobbying, still trying to work hard year after year to ban asbestos from being used in industry and to get it away from workers who might be around it. So both prevent asbestos use and prevent asbestos disease. They go hand in hand. Uh, so that was really a successful and great week uh, for our clients and for our firm. And then we also uh, did, oh, the recaps on our blog, by the way. And we've opened up the scholarship for any young students out there who are looking for some extra money. We've got a great competition going on, so make sure to write in and uh, compete for that money, for the scholarship, rather. And then also, we've, of course, opened the registration for our race. This will be our second annual race, 5K for the Mesothelioma Race for Justice. And uh, that'll be in September. So go to our website. You can see our blog recapping the ADAO March on Capitol Hill. You can see all about the scholarship and about our amazing race. So this week we are talking about mesothelioma and asbestos, of course. But the question today is why are there still so many cases? Why does everyone seem to know somebody who got mesothelioma when asbestos was used so long ago? And because, and that's a question I get a lot, just in the, from other people that I interact with, they say, isn't it done by now? Why are you still a lawyer that does this every day? And how could you have a whole law firm that works for these people? Because I would think they're all long gone or as best as stopped being used, you know, a long time ago. Well, that's a complex question that gets a complex answer. One of the reasons, there's probably, there's multiple reasons, and I'll tell you what the top reasons are. One of them is that people really stop smoking, and smoking is a big killer, uh, as we've known for a long time, causes cancer and brings early death, early mortality. And cancer is something that comes from cell regeneration. So as the cells reproduce, the more times they reproduce, or regenerate rather, uh, the more likely a cancer is to interrupt that regeneration process, get into the DNA, and get a cancer cell. So it, as, your, as your cells multiply millions and millions of times over, uh, that pattern can get interrupted and you get cancer. So if you're 50, your cells haven't reproduced or regenerated nearly as many times as when you're 70 and especially when you're 80. So if you haven't died from lung cancer, from smoking or some other problem, uh, you have a likely, you're around longer to get this cancer from asbestos. So if you're exposed in the 1960s and you didn't get lung cancer because you stopped smoking in say 1990, now you're still alive because you made a smart decision and you said, okay, I'm gonna stop smoking. But then you get the unfortunate problem that that asbestos that you're exposed to catches up with you uh, in today's modern world in 2019. So along with that is life expectancy in that not only have we extended the life of a person from not smoking, but there's way better healthcare, we eat better, we exercise more. All of those things play into a person living into their late 80s rather than dying when you're 73. Uh, now, the average life expectancy continues to rise, and so that gives us more chance, uh, more of a chance to get an asbestos disease, which doesn't seem correct, but that is one of the reasons why you continue to see these mesothelioma cases. Another reason is that asbestos wasn't really off the market, or, you know, as I do these more modern cases, these third generation cases, as some of us in the industry call it, you see that asbestos was really used in the workplace much later than people realize. So I have a lot, multiple cases of guys who were exposed well into the 1980s, whether it's through breaks or insulation that was existing on pipes or gaskets that used asbestos through 1985, cement pipe used asbestos through 1992. Uh, there are uh, many, many products that had it throughout the 1980s. So. 
it's kind of like thought of as you know something that happened way back when. Well, really, I was in high school in the 1990s, and there were guys that were being occupationally exposed to asbestos at that time. So that is kind of a three-prong answer to a bigger question of why this disease really hasn't dipped down. It might have maybe been reduced by 10% or so in the last couple of years, but you're still looking at easily 3,000 people getting diagnosed with mesothelioma in the United States, and that's just here domestically. Internationally, it's actually a much bigger and far more tragic problem, but it's, it's tragic no matter how you look at it, uh, of course. But hopefully that gives you more of an understanding and a realization that the litigation is unfortunately, or better or worse, it's very active and it's not going to slow down. I guarantee I will be doing asbestos cases 10 years from now. So that is uh, hopefully educational and uh, gives you some insight into our practice. Thanks for listening. As always, have a great weekend. I will not be back next week. I'm gonna be on spring break with my beautiful bride and our eight-year-old son. So uh, stay tuned, hang in there. Thanks for watching and don't be afraid to give us some feedback, comment, like, anything because we love it. It helps us realize what kind of audience we're reaching and what people think about the videos or any other posts or blogs. I know Allie here in house would love to hear your feedback on a lot of her blogs and writing that she does. So thanks very much for listening, for watching, for participating and have an excellent week. Thanks, bye.